I want you guys to use your imagination for one second. Imagine that the sun right now, the one that you're seeing right now that's lighting up this entire area, just literally just explodes right now. Like I'm being dead serious, the sun, bloom. Now what would really happen? Well, not some good things. We'd probably all be dead, but that's not the point. The point is, I wanna talk about the term supernova. And if you've seen one of my past videos, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. In today's video, I'm gonna be photographing a supernova from my very own backyard. Yes, a star that exploded in space thousands of years ago. They call it the Eastern Veil Nebula, and last time I shot the Western Veil Nebula, so this one's right next to it, but the same kind of deal follows. This is a nebula that is the aftermath of a star explosion. It's one of the coolest targets to ever take a picture of in the night sky, in my opinion at least, and it's definitely one of my favorite targets that I've ever taken a picture of in this entire sky. Just as usual, I'm gonna be using my camera and telescopes up to photograph this giant thing, and hopefully bring you guys a new and improved image with a lot of new upgrades and features compared to last year so I can really give you guys a way better image than what I usually show you. If you're new to the channel, my name is Tanner and tonight I'm gonna to be photographing a star explosion from space. So come along with me for the ride. So yeah guys, our star is gonna explode pretty soon. Not to get you guys scared, but in space terms, it is pretty soon. I'm talking about four billion years, so you guys will be completely fine, including myself. Nothing to worry about. For the generation that's in four billion years, ugh. But yeah, let me run down what really happens in a supernova explosion from start to finish. So essentially what happens is a star is born from a lot of different elements in space. Once that star is created, it turns into a white dwarf star. That's when the star is at its hottest. And over the next few million or billion years, this star is going to slowly cool down. But essentially what happens is once a star starts to die, it starts to get cooler and it starts to get a lot bigger. Now our sun is kind of in the middle of this process right now. It's orange, it's not white. So it means it's not as hot as those young hot stars. Our sun is probably middle-aged right now. But soon in about four billion years, our sun is going to expand and expand and eventually it's gonna swallow the earth. Yeah, we're gonna be goners. And so when it swallows the earth, it, it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until the star finally explodes. Now to us viewers, this is gonna look absolutely incredible. We're gonna be like, oh my God, this looks so cool. And if you're really caught in that supernova, not a fun experience, not a fun experience. So luckily in our Milky Way galaxy, we have a supernova remnant, which is the aftermath of a star explosion that we can take a picture of right now in space. And it gives us some two awesome, really crazy looking things to look at in space. Now, luckily these things happened a pretty long time ago, so we can really see the full effect of what we're taking a picture of here. So I know what you're thinking. Okay, you've taken pictures of nebulae, galaxies, and now supernova remnants. What's the big difference here? Why? is this such a big deal? Well, there's a couple cool little features that supernova remnants have in comparison to nebulae, so let me run that down. Supernova remnants have kind of a different texture of nebulosity to say the least. They have a little bit of like streaks of fire it almost looks like, and they really have, it looks like little like space noodles even, like I don't even know how to describe this thing. But the two things that they mostly emit is oxygen-3 and hydrogen-alpha, which are two very important space gases that I've discussed on this YouTube channel before. So hydrogen-alpha is one of the most profound nebulae dust in the sky, and it's really important to really get all of those things. If you were to literally throw a hydrogen alpha filter in your eyes and you were to take an exposure, you would see so much, it's not even funny. The next one right alongside that is oxygen three, which is a blue color in space, which really blends in with hydrogen alpha, just absolutely amazing. So. It's another really cool thing to take a picture of. But a lot of the times, there's a lot of different gases mixed in with those, like S2 or sulfur 2, which is kind of an orangey kind of color, or you have hydrogen beta or H beta, you can't really see that. But the awesome thing about the supernova remnant that I'm gonna be taking a picture of tonight is that it emits colors that are really just red and blue. So that means that I'm gonna have a red and blue image full of crazy star explosion stuff, and it looks absolutely incredible from here. And luckily for us, we have a filter that gets all that hydrogen alpha and O3 for us, blocking everything out with it. And the reason I use this filter is because it's really not enjoyable to take pictures of nebulae when you have the moon and a bunch of street lights and everybody else partying, shining their lights in the sky. It's really not fun for us. So to fight against that light pollution, we have a filter that only isolates hydrogen alpha and O3 so we can only bring those details into our camera sensors so then we are only focusing on that and getting the light that we need. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a blast, but 
let's kind of run down what this thing actually is. Well, its real name and scientific nerdy name is NGC6992, and yeah, even though I'm a nerd, I'm gonna still call that a nerdy name because it's true. The star that actually caused this thing exploded around 7,000 years ago, and it's around 1,400 light years away from Earth. So we can sit back and watch this thing with no issues. That's way too far for us. To be in the danger zone, that is. It lies in our Milky Way galaxy, and is a really bright supernova target, and a great beginner target for astrophotographers. The location of this is actually really right under the Cygnus constellation so it's really not that hard to find. If you take an exposure of the Milky Way in a dark sky site you could probably see this guy pretty easily and it's kind of underlooked as a lot of people are taking pictures of the Cygnus constellation and once they find all the hype about the supernova remnant right down from there they find a lot of cool things going on in there. Now of course you already know that I knew all the fun things about this Veil Nebula loop because there's a ton of different stuff going on in here. You have the Pickering's Triangle which I'll show you an image of that which I took. That is part of the supernova remnant that has its own name and then we have the eastern veil nebula which is what i'm shooting a picture of it kind of looks like an alien head if you ask me and then we also have the witch's broom nebula which is what they also call the western veil nebula and you can kind of see why it looks like a witch's broom too i'll show you a picture of that as well so you have the eastern veil the pickering triangle and the western veil combine that all together and you have the veil supernova remnant cloud complex is what i kind of like to call it it's just a giant giant field of a graveyard to be honest i mean it's the death of a star and that's just what it left behind. It's like a graveyard in space. I forgot to mention if you guys want to buy any Astro gear, make sure you use my High Point Scientific link below to purchase all that fun stuff. And if you guys want to check out my telescope, I have my affiliate links down below in the description so you guys can check that out as well. It helps the channel out tremendously. Thank you guys. So how am I going to be able to take a picture of this thing? It looks pretty crazy to take a picture of. How in the world am I going to take a picture of this? Well, let me explain. First, I'm going to use my Ioptron GEM28 tripod equatorial tracking mount to basically just track the stars. No big deal there, right? Yeah, well, actually that's a big problem because I need guiding for that to really work. I have a guide scope and my ZWO ASI 120MC on top of there to really get the precision tracking that I need to make sure that my stars don't have a lot of star trails when I'm taking these long exposures because this guy is bright but it's also really faint for us. To really take a picture of this thing I use my Player One Artemis C Pro which is a IMX 294 sensor which is really going to help me pick up a lot of those faint structures and really make sure that that sensitive sensor gets all the detail that I need in a short period of time because I don't have a lot of time to shoot this target because we have thunderstorms. We just had a tornado over here not too long ago so. And now there is something that I really don't like and really don't appreciate that was a problem last year and I'll get into that after I discuss all the gear that I'm going to be using to take a picture of this tonight. But the real magic of this setup that I have behind me is the filter that I just bought, the Optolong L Ultimate, and this thing is absolutely extraordinary. I did a review on it. You guys can check that video out. I'll post the link in my description if you want to check out that filter. It's one of the best one-shot color dual narrowband filters on the market right now, and it is an excellent filter for getting all that moonlight and stray light, all that light pollution just out of your picture. You get a really clean picture, so you don't have to worry about those full moon nights anymore. You can take a picture of this thing with 100% comfortableness, except when your star in your solar system is about to explode, then sorry, no night sky shooting for you. But this shouldn't be that hard of a target because of how good this filter is. So I'm really excited to get this picture tonight. To really focus on this target, I'm gonna be using my SV Boney Doublet Refractor Telescope. It has a diameter of 80 millimeters and a focal length of 448 millimeters. So unfortunately, I won't be able to get the Pickering Triangle, the Western and the Eastern Veil all together. I'm going to only focus on the Eastern Veil Nebula tonight. But who knows, maybe I'll try the Western Veil or the Pickering Triangle again because I can fit those two in the same picture, but I can't fit the whole thing, so a little disappointed there, but hey, what are you going to do? I have that all connected to my Melee Quieter 3Q Mini PC so I can really just sit back and relax and not have to worry about bringing a whole laptop out here because those days are over. So I mean, it's not like the conditions are bad right now, but they actually kind of are so let me show you guys right now wildfire smoke all the way up there something that i really was hoping was not going to happen this summer and we got pretty far but as you guys can see that is not just clouds this is a mixture of clouds and wildfire smoke really making visibility in the night really bad now I noticed that wildfire smoke actually last night when I was starting to take a picture of this and I was super bummed about that because well Maybe I wasn't just bummed, I was probably really, really mad. It says that things are going to be clearing up tonight in terms of the wildfire smoke, but honestly, I don't really believe it because that's what they said last year and it didn't happen. So we're just going to really hope and see if things are good tonight, but you know, 
you gotta get what you can get sometimes, but I, I really hope that this isn't a problem next year because if it keeps at this rate, there's gonna be no trees left and eventually there's gonna be no wildfire smoke because all of our trees are gonna be gone. So let's hope that's not a real thing. So I'm gonna ask you guys to wish me luck as I take a picture of this tonight. And hopefully this image is good because the last time I shot the Eastern Vale Nebula was way back in 2022. We do not talk about those days. So yeah, it was an okay image, but it's time to refresh and get a brand new one. And with a whole new upgraded setup, I can't wait to get started. The plan for tonight is to get around five to six hours. And I think I'm gonna spend roughly 10 to 12 hours on this because with my filter combined, this is gonna be a pretty good image. Yes, even though the moon is pretty much full, it's okay because I have a good filter for it and I'm shooting on the opposite part of the sky. So that's gonna really diminish the amount of light that gets through to my filter, if any gets through. So yeah, I think we're gonna be okay. I'm I'm planning on shooting a target that's a little bit more faint than I did last year that my old filter couldn't really do and we're gonna hopefully have that going for the next video but we're gonna see how things are with the smoke and the weather because it's not looking so great but like I said we just got to keep our optimism up and hopefully we're gonna get a good image tonight so wish me luck let's go in the nighttime All right, you guys made it this far. Welcome back, and here we are in the nighttime now. We have some lovely, gorgeous conditions out here. Full moon, oh, you just gotta love it. And some wonderful light pollution, Bortle 7 skies. That is such amazing stuff. So you already know that life is throwing everything that it has at us right now, but that's not gonna stop us from getting some good pictures, is it? Well, no, because guess what? I have the Optolong L Ultimate, as you guys know, and this is a filter that's going to basically block out all of this light pollution so we really don't have to worry about it. Nothing really new is going to be happening this time around. We're going with the same kind of deal, five minute exposures, same gain, same offset, same everything. Of course we're going to be dithering because we do not want our image to look so crazy, but it's been so long since I've finally been out here and even though the grass is wet from the sprinklers that came on not too long ago, I still am really glad to be out here enjoying these summer skies again because well, even though they're full of moonlight and an absolute monstrosity of lights that have just polluted the sky, you still gotta give the credits to the experience. And if you could see a couple stars, yeah, I'm gonna be thanking them for just letting me see them for once. Oh, that's a bug. So without further ado, guys, I don't really have much else to say. You guys know that the setup is running. We got polar aligned. We did all that crazy stuff to get ready for our imaging session tonight. My setup is right behind me, if you guys can see that. It's shooting away right now, and it's gonna be doing that for a few hours. You know, the summer nights are not too long, so, you know, we take what we can get here. So I think I'm gonna head to bed, say goodnight to all the frogs and the owls that are just making all these crazy noises right now. Maybe even those crickets too, if you guys can hear that. And it's time to show you guys my result of the Veil Nebula, a supernova remnant. And I hope you guys enjoy the image I got at the end of this video. If you wanna learn more about the gear that I use to take this photo, I have affiliate links down below. And just clicking those links really helps me with no extra cost to you guys. So I appreciate that if you guys check those out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Clear skies, everybody.